Stigler confirmed every aspect of his story. Hey, what's going on troops? Welcome to the channel, Gen Dip Commando. And today we're going to be reacting to a military video that was suggested to me in the Discord group. And the video that we're going to be reacting to today is when a BF-109 spared a stricken B-17, so it's two fighter pilots basically, um, yeah, attacking each other and then apparently one of them gets spared. But we'll we'll get into that in the video, guys. I've never seen it before, literally just showed up in my recommendations and yeah, I really look forward to watching this. Apparently it's a, um, a, a fight between a German soldier and a, a Canadian soldier, I might be wrong on that, but we'll, we'll find out anyway. But a few admin points before we get into it guys i want to give a special shout out to someone called niff he's got a youtube channel i'll post a link in the description who's basically redesigned my uh, channel um, banner and he's done a fantastic job of that so a special thank thank you to you brother really do appreciate it you literally went and did it off your own back so thanks very much guys i'm getting so many wonderful messages on um, youtube and on discord off of loads of people from all over the world saying nothing but positive things so all my positive messages back to you guys much love if you haven't subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel and consider smashing the like button and the notifications as well so you can get reminded when another video comes out troops and join the discord group if you want to chat with me or the other group of uh, lads and lasses who's on there I'm having some mint banter recently so just get on that discord group and you can drop your suggestions for videos and all of that good stuff but that's enough of me rambling on. Let's just get straight into this. I hope you enjoy it, troops. Let's stick around till the end, and I'll speak to you after the reaction, okay? It was December the 20th, 1943, and in the freezing air high above Germany, 2nd Lieutenant Charles Charlie Brown struggled to keep his mortally damaged American bomber on course. Brown had been wounded in the shoulder. His tail gunner, Sergeant Hugh Ecky Eckenrode, was dead, and several other members of the crew were wounded, some severely. Their aircraft, B-17 Ye Old Pub, had been hit twice by flak as it approached its target, the Focke Wolf plant in the German city of Bremen, forcing the crew to shut down one of the engines and throttle back on another. This had left it lagging behind the main formation of aircraft from the 379th Bombardment Group, and groups of German fighters had closed in like sharks, sensing blood in the water. Up to 15 fighters had attacked the bomber, and the whole tail section was shot to pieces. The nose cone was missing. The electrical, hydraulic, and oxygen systems were damaged. Wow, guys, so basically this vehicle is, this plane is in dire straits. It's been damaged. He's got people killed on on, um, on the plane, so his staff can't even, you know, the, the pilots and these crew can't even shoot back. That's a pretty scary situation to be in, guys, you know. He can't defend himself or anything, and his plane is working on one engine, and it's not even working well. The radio was out and the entrails of the crippled bomber flapped in the slipstream through gaping rents in the fuselage. The B-17s are tough old birds and this one somehow kept on flying despite the damage. Brown blacked out for a short time due to pain, loss of blood and a lack of oxygen and the bomber spiralled towards the ground. Brown came to and realised that the B-17 was only a few hundred feet above the ground. He somehow managed to get it back under control and turned west towards England in safety, 250 miles away. Brown wasn't able to coax the B-17 much above 1,000 feet, and he was vaguely aware that he had passed close to the perimeter of a German airfield. Soon after, he realized that a German Messerschmitt Bf 109 was flying in close formation beside him. It was so close that Brown could see the German pilot as he gestured towards the ground, telling Brown to set the bomber down. Most of the B-17's gunners were wounded. Only a few guns were still working. Wow, so he was that close he could actually see the, the enemy pilot um, gesturing him to land the plane. That's insane, guys. Plus, he's injured as well. He was bleeding, he blacked out, and he nearly crashed the plane. And then he woke up. I mean, what must be going through your mind? I mean, picture yourself in that situation, troops. That must be absolutely horrendous. And now he's been tailed by... Um, an enemy fighter pilot. This is this is quite a scary story, man, to start with. And none were able to shoot at the enemy fighter alongside. Brown could only look on at the German pilot and shake his head. For a short time, the Messerschmitt flew beside the bomber. Then it slid away above and behind. Brown waited for the gunfire that must mean the end of the old pub. 
but nothing happened. He realized to his astonishment that the German fighter was flying escort on the B-17. As they crossed the coastline and flew out over the North Sea, the fighter remained on station. Only when they were well out from the German coast did the fighter slide in again, close to the bomber. Brown looked across, and the German pilot looked back at him, raised a gloved hand in salute, and then swung his aircraft away back towards the east. Brown managed to put Ye old Pub on the ground, not at their home base in Cambridgeshire, but at an air base of the 448th Bomb Group near Norfolk and East Anglia. He and all his crew, other than the tail gunner, survived. Well, At debriefing, there. Brown told his story. Wow. That is an incredible story so far. I can't, I can't believe that. So the, the German, I don't even want to call it enemy now because he's done something which an ally would do. He's actually escorted him back when he could have quite easily taken advantage of that and shot him down, which in the, in the, at the time, guys, that would have been quite normal. Let's face it. Um, what a heroic, nice gesture. I mean, like, what, what even, what, I can even call it a gesture? That's, I think that's medal worthy, to be honest. In, in today's society, you know, wow, that's, that's a fantastic. It takes a lot of courage to be able to do that, guys. That's incredible. ...about the German fighter which escorted him. It was decided that this should be kept secret. The notion of an honorable German pilot choosing not to shoot down a damaged American bomber just didn't fit with the message that the US Air Force wanted to give out. Charlie Brown survived the war, went home to go to college and then rejoined the Air Force in 1949. He served until 1965, when he retired as a colonel. It wasn't until much later, in 1986, at a meeting of retired combat pilots called Gathering of the Eagles, that he first spoke about what had happened. The response was strong, though some questioned whether the whole incident really happened. Even Brown began to wonder. His memories of that day in 1943 were hazy due to his injuries, exhaustion and the stress of combat. Could he be remembering it all wrong? Brown decided that he was going to find the German pilot involved, if only to prove that he hadn't imagined the whole thing. It took four years, but in 1990, Brown finally received a letter from a man named Stigler, who was living in Canada. Stigler explained that he had been the pilot of the German... What? This is insane, troops. I can't believe this. So, I mean, we're talking like, what, 40 years or something afterwards, after he'd been like in the military again and, and reached the ranks of colonel, then he leaves, and then he goes and decides to try and find if this was actually truth, because he obviously, his brain was going a bit funny then in old age. And then this guy turns out uh, to actually find him. It, uh, that, that's incredible. German fighter who had escorted Ye old Pub. On December the 20th, 1943, Franz Stigler had been a 27-kill veteran pilot. He had flown against American bombers in his Messerschmitt BF 109 G6 that morning, and he was refueling on the ground when Ye old Pub passed close by. He took off intending to shoot down the American bomber. However, as he closed with the limping aircraft, he could see just how badly it had been hit. He would later say that he had never seen a more severely damaged aircraft still flying. Stigler's commander had told his pilots never to fire at an enemy who was descending on a parachute. While the crew of the old pub hadn't bailed out, they were clearly no longer capable of fighting, and Stigler decided that he could not bring himself to attack. Instead, he flew alongside and gestured to Brown to land. He just simply couldn't imagine that the crippled aircraft could possibly make it back to England. When Brown refused, Stigler made an extraordinary decision. Instead of shooting it down, he flew close formation with the B-17, hoping that this... That is such an honourable thing to do, troops, especially in war. That is such an honourable thing to do. You know, if... Maybe it's in today's society, it, it means that much more because we've, we've obviously witnessed these wars and we can remember it through the digital age as well. We've, we've archived all the footage of wars and everything. If, if only, you know, heroic deeds like this were done more often, maybe it's the need for war would, you know, maybe it's the guys in, this, in, in uniform wouldn't feel the need to... I don't know. I don't know how to explain what I'm feeling. I, I guess if... I don't know. It's just so heroic, guys, you know, and it it makes all of this war business seem a little bit, you know, irrelevant. It's like little little acts of random kindness, you know, make the world a better place, I think. It would be nice if we had more deeds like this, I guess, especially in today's society. If we had more acts of kindness like that, we'd go far, wouldn't we? 
would deter flak batteries on the coast from firing at it. He flew with the bomber well out over the North Sea until it was clear of German airspace and then left it to continue towards England. Stickler never told anyone about what had happened. Sparing an American bomber would likely have led to punishment and perhaps even execution, but he often wondered if it had made it back to base. Stigler continued flying fighters throughout the war. In 1953, he emigrated from Germany to Canada, where he started a successful business. When he heard from Charlie Brown in 1990, Stigler confirmed every aspect of his story. Franz Stigler and Charlie Brown were astonished to discover that they had been living less than 200 miles apart for much of the time since the war. Stigler had settled in Vancouver, British Columbia, while Brown was in Seattle, Washington. In the latter years, the two men remained close friends, often visiting and talking to other flyers about their shared experiences. Hey guys, I've got a lot of time for this story. That's an absolutely wonderful story. Thanks to the guy um, who recommended me to watch this. It's, um, yeah, that's really took me by a bit, Troops. What did you think of that? Drop a comment below. I'd be interested to feel, uh, to see what your feelings are on this because that's, that's made my day a little bit. It's made me really happy that, you know, through bad times, they've gotten a really lovely um, outcome of that. And to, for them to have both been living next to each other for most of their later life, that's fantastic, man. That's fantastic. Key points to take away from this then, troops. Random acts of uh, kindness, you know. Random acts of kindness can, can truly make the world a better place. And look at these two gents, man, you know. Absolute class, class act, both of them. And thanks to both of these guys for their service. But that's enough of me waffling on. It's um, it's that time again, troops, to wrap this up. If you're brand new to this channel, you know, and you want to support me, your a former Royal Marines commando, and um, I'm just trying to crack YouTube as best I can and give you great content. If you feel I'm doing that, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you wish, and join the Discord group, guys. I'd really appreciate that. But other than that, I will see you probably tomorrow because I put videos out every single day. And yeah, much love, guys. Peace.